Welcome to Life at BHS. I am Aiden R. Graves with the Racial Justice Alliance, and I will be reading off some questions. I am here with... Christina and Juna. Okay. Uh, I have a couple questions, and before we get into this, I would just like to ask, did middle school prepare you guys for what was gonna happen for high school? Because I understand that this is the first year that like, you guys are the first, first years that are going into this high school? That went into this high school? Actually, no. I, We're not I think the, the first years. no, the I, juniors. yeah, the, the rising seniors are the um, first people who were at Macy's, I think, for their freshman year. Like, they, they'll, they're gonna spend their whole entire high school um, career at Macy's. And so, so will we, probably. The new school's probably not gonna be built. Um, I don't think middle school prepared us at all. We had like a gap year, um, almost in seventh grade. It was like um, all on Google Meet. It was like a hybrid, and then sixth grade we were cut off. So basically, all our like core learning um, was done over Google Meet. So high school was like a slap in the face, basically. Mm -hmm. um, also, homework wise. Um, throughout middle school, we weren't given a lot of homework, or that's true for Hunt. She went to Edmonds, but um, yeah, Hunt, they were really like slacking on homework and like preparing us um, for the type of lessons we're gonna learn in high school, and so, yeah. All right, I'm gonna be reading off some questions, like, and my first question I wanna start off with is, what's it like being in a school with no windows? <laughs> um. You know, people make like a big deal out of it, like, oh, there's no windows, but you really don't notice it. Mm -hmm. I think what you notice more is how you can hear everybody in like the whole school, like all the time, like, God. like people, like people are like running around the hallways, um, um, because there's like a there's like a passing period that like goes to lunch um, in the middle of the day, and so. Like my civics classroom didn't have like walls that were all the way up to the ceiling, and so we would just hear kids like running back and forth from the lunchroom, um, which is really annoying. But yeah, yeah. Like meanwhile, like some of the classrooms have like walls that go all the way up to the ceiling, but that's like a new thing that just happened for freshman year. So before that, they had like no doors, and most of the um, like missing walls it was like open space for classroom. So yeah. All right, uh, my second question is, what's it like having an idea to get in and out of the building? <laughs> um, to be honest, you don't really like use it. Like when we first got it, they were like, oh, show your IDs at the door. But we didn't actually start doing that until like the end of the year, really. And even then, our security guard is literally so useless, like. <laughs> Any, anybody, so and I mean anybody, can just walk into BHS at any given time. Like, mm -hmm. the doors are not locked, really. You can just, like, walk in, and you can leave the building as well without your ID, and he will not, he will not run to get you. I promise <laughs> you that. <laughs> he will not come to get you. Yeah. Good to know if that security guard is watching this. Hi. Oh. Troy. Uh... <laughs> My third question is, what's it like knowing there was a cancer-causing chemical in the old high school and that if they didn't do the tests to find out that it was there, that you guys would have been going to that high school? Um, I feel like I would have done fine. Um, I actually wish we were back in that old high school. <laughs> Um, because, you know, four, or, you know, if we went back now, three years in that high school, like, I'm not gonna get cancer. Or at least I won't be in that school long enough to, you know what I mean, be, like, exposed to that much cancerous um, chemicals. I know that there were teachers that did die from, you know what I mean, like, cancer, getting it from the school, but, like, those teachers have been teaching there for, like, years, you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah. Also, I played basketball, like, mini metro and stuff like that when I was little at BHS, like almost every weekend. And so I feel like if I, like, I, like I'm already like exposed to that stuff, you know what I mean? And I'm fine. <laughs> Maybe, oh, for now. Um, how about you? Uh, personally, I'd be chilling. Um, I feel like it wouldn't make that much of a difference. I mean, I get cancer later, that'd be really too bad. But I'm going to school 
like in a mall, so that's too bad too. <laughs> Uh, do you think the staff supported your mental health the best they could, or what do you think they could have done better? Um, there's really like no. I feel like there's like only like one teacher, like one of like my core teachers that I could probably like go to. Like, like if I told them, they would like they were like supporting me like fully. Like they didn't take any late like points off of work, I could submit like work a month later and they'd like be like um, really supportive. Like they just wanted me to like pass and like pass with an A. Mm -hmm. Like that was like their ultimate goal. And some of my other teachers were like low-key depressed themselves so um, it wasn't really like an outlet to go to. They were just more focusing on like getting their work done, um, grading wise. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that the halls are like loud and like do you get headaches when you're there? Um, I know when like when I was asking like people around like when I was in eighth grade about how BHS was like the environment they always complain about it being loud. I didn't find it too loud like during the actual like class period, but like passing in between classes or like being in class while like there's passing time, that was really loud. But also depends on like what floor, because like the bottom floor is, <sighs> they're animals. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's crazy when it's lunchtime. All right. Uh, I think that's all for this segment, and stay tuned. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. I am Millie Glosson. I'm with the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, and I'm here with... Hi, my name is Nasra. And I'm Alex. And today I will be asking them questions about their life at BHS. So the first question I'm going to start off with is, like, are the halls crowded when you get there? What time of day, like, specifically? Like, in the morning or during transitions? In the morning, there are a lot of people just hanging out, doing whatever, especially in the cafeteria, you know, people just sitting around the tables or um, there are like these little areas by the escalators where you can just sit in there. There's a lot of people in there, classrooms. But during transitions is where it really kind of starts to get more busy, you know, uh, congested. You can tell who has their license, you know, people that have their license stay to the right side of the hallway and then it's, it flows smoothly and the people that don't, they just do whatever and they gaggle with their friends and then they just like walk down the middle and it makes it really hard for people to get around. Um, yeah, when the escalators are working, um, it takes you like a couple minutes just to go up the escalators and, and they added like a one per step rule because the escalators are always getting broken and there's only like three escalators in Vermont. So, so it takes a long time for them to fix it and it just always gets broken and it's really crowded during passing period. Especially uh, like when the escalators are broken, there's this stairway way in the back. You have to walk way, way, way back in the corner to just to get to the second floor and specifically at the top, that's where it's really crowded because there's always people trying to get from the top to the bottom and the bottom of the top and there's just, just this huge cluster of people just like staying around there. The next question I'm going to ask is, what is it like having no real, like, no real walls? Um, it's not that bad other than the fact that um, when people are skipping class you can hear everything they do and you can hear and you can just hear like everything like even other classes like sometimes a teacher will leave and be like you're talking too loud I can hear you in my class and and you can just hear everything like if someone's scrolling on TikTok walking past your your door you'll you'll hear it most of the classes I had were in um, rooms where the walls were extended to the ceiling, but I did have a study hall in a room that did not have the walls extended to the ceiling. And there were always people just like out in the hallway with like a group of four of their friends and they were dropping F-bombs and there's nothing the teacher can do about it. And it's just kind of hilarious, but. Oh yeah, sometimes people just 
toss some stuff over the ceiling. <laughs> and it'll just like randomly hit someone's head. One time it hit the teacher's head and she, <laughs> and she ran out and she's like, stop it, come here. Okay, the next question I'm gonna ask is like, is it easy to get up and down the stairs with everyone in the halls? Um, easy. It's not hard, it just takes a lot of time uh, because of the congestion that I described earlier, but it's not like a difficult, a difficult task, but it does take time. And they don't really give you enough time to transition between classes. You know, if you have one class at the front left corner of the school on the first floor and you have to get to the front left corner on the second floor, that's, that's a pretty long ways, especially if the escalators are down, you have to walk all the way to the back corner go up the stairs, go deal with the congestion, and then you have to go all the way back over to the front left corner, and that, that could take anywhere from like three to six minutes, and transitions are usually like, what, five minutes? Um, yeah, there's only two stairs in the whole building, and the, one of the best stair wells, someone punched a hole in the wall, and then someone wrote compost on top of it, so now there's just like a bunch of rotten food like thrown into this hole in the wall, and it stinks very bad. Alex, that seemed pretty personal. Um, what are the transition times? Does everyone leave the class at like the same time or different times? Um, you get five, min five minutes for passing period, and the only time people leave t different times is lunch, because there's first lunch, second lunch, and third lunch. You can speak about that. Yeah, so the classes that you're in, they all get the same lunch. Like if you're in art class with a certain teacher, that whole class will get dismissed to either first, second, or third lunch, right? and then you have to get back a certain time to your next class, which is really confusing with how they schedule it because you have you have friends that have first lunch, friends that have second lunch, and friends that have third lunch, and it's so that there's less congestion when you go through the line to get your food, right? Even, even with how they split it up, there are still people in the lunch line. Um, it's just one straight line, right, with what, like 70 people. People will cut straight to the front, and there's just this glob at the front, and then like, a, a, early spaced out line moving towards the back, and it's just really annoying sometimes. Um, the last question I'm gonna ask is, do you have any classes with people in higher grades than you? Um, it depends really like what class it is, like art. Art, you can have with anyone, like there's art one and art two and stuff. Uh, I didn't take art last year, I just took core classes, so this year I have art one, so most, I'll most likely have it with a bunch of freshmen. Yeah, core classes are usually by grade, you know, um, algebra two, geometry, physics, but then you get your electives and those, they kind of like mix together. Well, that's it for the questions. Hi, my name is Akila, and we're here with my beautiful co-host, Binti, and, and Reverend Mark Hughes. Oh, love you guys. Um, and we're at this segment called Live at BHS. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so first things first, how do you like BHS? Like, just in a general, you know, pros and cons kind of way. Um, I like, I mean, I like most of my classes. I mean, for the most part, the teachers were good. There are times when, you know, some teachers were not as, like. Say it. <laughs> um, Come on, Binti, look right in the camera and just say it. Um, I don't know, there's just like some teachers that don't really know, like, I, just how to teach, like, fret, like, kids in our grade, especially because like we were in, like our middle school kind of got cut short, so I feel like we learned a little less than like other classes. Mm. So there are just some teachers that, you know, we're moving at like such a fast pace mm. to like the point where like it was 
almost like it was too much for most students because we didn't really get that education that mm -hmm. like students in the past got. Mm -hmm. But I also like I did I was fine with like being in the mall. I didn't really like hate it too much. I think that you know, yeah, the window part was like it was a problem, but like it really wasn't all that bad, and that's like the thing people complain most about. But like I think the environment, it was definitely like hard to focus in, but I think that it was, you know, it wasn't the worst place to go to school. Can I uh, just, I mean, Binti, it's a, I just, it just came to me. You guys are the first freshman class to start in, um, in that, that space, in Macy's, or whatever you want to call it, after what we, what we call the worst of uh, COVID. It was literally your, what was it, your seventh and eighth grades where we were in the middle of a, a serious aspect of the global pandemic. Is that correct? Yeah. Wow. It was like, well, it was like the middle of sixth grade and mm -hmm. like the whole seventh grade. Wow. Wow. So you, and then at the same time, they find the PFAS, the PFA, PFOAS in the, the chemicals in the, in the building, in the high school building. You weren't in the high school building at the time, but they closed it right about the same time? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they also found those chemicals in the middle school that I mm -hmm. went to because this summer, like, they were airing it out mm -hmm. of the um, auditorium while people were there for summer school. Mm -hmm. So I found that very, like, weird because they, like, closed down the high school, but then they left the middle school to have those chemicals and, like, they didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm until now, but there are also like people using the, that building. So I don't think that was like a good way to, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> <Gotcha>. yeah, I just, <laughs> I don't know. But I think that if they were gonna like close the school down, the high school down mm -hmm. for like a chemical that's in most of the other schools, mm -hmm. like it's like, the, it's basically like they just closed down the high school for no reason. Cause mm -hmm. it's not like they're gonna knock down every other school in the district. Exactly. It's true. That's very true. Um, I guess the next question I want to ask is like, I mean, you talked about the cons. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, but going through like such a transformational time of your life, like having to be isolated <laughs> from the pandemic, right. but then also having like a different change in environment based on like than other classes before you, do you feel like it was more helpful or hurtful? You know, like kind of the pros and cons of that too. Do you think that it maybe benefited you more than other kids who previously got to like not have go through a global pandemic? <laughs> right. Um, honestly, I mean, ways that it was helpful, I would say they're like, a lot of the things that we're doing now are online, which ma definitely makes it easier to just like search, like quickly search something up. Like, I think like um, just being on our Chromebooks all the time, doing most of our work on online definitely just made like um, reaching out to the internet way easier. But also like the problem with that was definitely that students would just find like a way to cheat on like any tests and they would like I think that we definitely since we had so much access to the internet there we definitely did like abuse it a little too much but I think now that we've like definitely like fully transitioned into in person um, I think that there's a really good balance with it and it yeah, I think have, doing using Chromebooks for most of our classes was very helpful. Yeah, definitely, definitely want to thank thank you for sitting down with us for coming out. I mean, it's I mean, it, talk about resilience. Just uh, <laughs> one journey, one heck of a journey that all of you guys have had up until now. You know, just as always, like black folks, you know, we are resilient people and we're better for it. You know, that's why. You know, we say through the fire. We don't say in the fire or stuck in it. Sure. We, you know, and we always come out. Uh, like pure gold at the end of the day. We're better for it, for our experiences. I know that there's some conversation we can have 
about you know your perceptions and also your thoughts and plans on your personal wellness and the wellness of your your peers and moving forward and some of the programs and services that you're uh, envisioning uh, to be able to be your own Calvary in, in your journey ahead. So again, thank you uh, for coming out. Yes, we gonna see you walk across the stage real soon. Thank you. Um, that's a wrap, guys. See you next time.